What is up? I'm Marcelo. Welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we're talking about the Blackmagic Pocket 6K and its older brother, the Pocket 6K Pro. Uh, what I love about these cameras, some things I'm not so fond of, and what kind of shooters these cameras are best for, because depending on how you shoot could depend on which one of these models you want to pick up, or if you want to pick up either one of them at all. So I've been shooting with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K since the year it came out and I love it. Uh, it's been kind of my main shooter uh, unless I'm hired on a job where I have to shoot with something else. I always use this camera. I have a certain way that I shoot where this camera has been perfect so far, but there are some things about it that the 6K Pro really brings to the forefront that's going to help me a ton. But first, let's just start with the 6K. I've done almost everything you can do with the 6K. I've, I've shot commercials with the 6K, music videos with the 6K, I've done interviews with the 6K, and, and long form live events with the 6K. It's an all around beast. Due to things like the HDMI output, the XLR input, and most of you already know about the amazing 6K sensor in this thing. It is absolutely incredible, especially for the price. And that's something I want to touch on because at this point, the 6K has been discontinued, which, it could be kind of scary for any uh, prospective buyers of the 6K because I'm not really sure why they discontinued it. It could be just because they wanted to move into a better form factor and they knew um, the 6K Pro would have better longevity and the new G2 with the 6K sensor uh, could fit the certain market that it needs to. But I will say without any knowledge from Blackmagic Design directly, uh, this has been a very reliable camera. I've shot with a lot of Blackmagic 6K models. I've only seen one ever malfunction. So with that in mind, you could pick one of these up right now for a great price. That is the one fortunate thing about it getting discontinued is now you can pick this one up for super cheap just because of that scare of picking up discontinued gear that uh, may not be supported. Now, I do think think that they are still delivering software updates to this. I know that this model got the gyro update, which allows DaVinci Resolve to actually read the gyro information to stabilize the footage in post, which is really, really cool. And I believe there is still software support for the camera. So if you're thinking about picking something up for cheap, that is an amazing film studio camera. This is that. And while we're on that subject of film studio camera, uh, that is something about this camera that is pretty particular to itself. And that while it has kind of this form factor of a DSLR uh, or something that you could run around with, run and gun or handheld, this thing is really a studio beast. Um, it doesn't have autofocus. It doesn't have uh, any stabilization as far as in-body stabilization. It's got the gyro system now, but it's still not something I would compare to something like the GH5. Uh, and the GH5 is something that I can take out and just shoot travel videos with, I can shoot vlogs with, and know that things are gonna be relatively smooth. If I handhold this, it's gonna be an issue. There's gonna be a lot of shake, um, there's gonna be a lot of turbulence in the footage and just micro jitters in the footage that even its gyro stabilization is gonna have a hard time taking out. And you'll see a lot of people kind of get around this by rigging it, by kind of building it up with a cage, with a monitor, with uh, external battery, with handles, rails for the lens to support the lens, all kinds of things just to give this a little bit more weight to make it kind of handle more like a studio camera because a film camera like a G2 or a RED or an Ari, it's gonna have a much bigger body and because of the balance and the weight, it's just easier to handhold. Um, even without stabilization because those cameras do not have stabilization either. So while there's a lot to love about the, the ergonomics, the body, the, the touch screen, the button placement, the, the feel has actually got a lot of hate. It feels a little plasticky and that was something that everybody pointed out when it came out and it was something I was a little disappointed with but it's kind of grown on me in its durability because as much as I've used it, as much as I beat this thing up, I've taken it in minus four degree weather, I've taken it in feet of snow, I've, I've taken it in super hot, super cold, I've taken it in super dirty, in all kinds of situations where this thing had the opportunity to fall apart and it didn't. So not even a crack, you know, there's some minor scratches on here, but nothing that's out of the ordinary and definitely nothing that I haven't seen in other camera bodies. Um, so while this one does feel a little cheaper, I would say that that material saves weight, which is really helpful um, when you have to think about, you wanna build this camera out. If this is the kind of camera that you either build out or put on a monopod or put on a, an easy rig or put on a, a gimbal, uh, you want the base of it to be as light as possible since you know that you have to cage it up um, and, and attach other accessories to it. 
Um, so I like the the material. Whatever that material is, I'm, I'm into it now. And I, I've loved this camera. And I'll continue to shoot with this camera. Thanks to my work, they have, they have got this new camera for me to use primarily uh, when on the job. And I've worked with other 6K Pros, uh, but I haven't in the way that I usually shoot. I usually shoot with a gimbal most of the time. Uh, it's kind of just my style. I enjoy it. And again, with a camera like this, one way that you can get around not being able to run, run and gun is if you can run and gun with a gimbal. If you're fast with a gimbal, this thing's amazing. Especially if the gimbal has focus controls on it, zoom controls, um, this thing is incredible. Uh, because then you have all the stability from the gimbal. Uh, and if you're quick with it, then you're quick. Because the problem with running and gunning is it's exactly what it sounds like. Usually it's a situation like a wedding where there's moments that happen that you may not know when they're happening, but when they happen, you gotta be there to catch them. And you're going from the makeup room to the groom's room and to the dance room and the dance hall. Live events are another one that are tough to get with this camera when you're trying to run and gun. Because usually when you're trying to get a live event to make a recap for the artist, you're running you know, all around the venue, whether that's a theater or an arena or a small venue, you're trying to capture all these different angles to put together this recap. Uh, for social media usually. And running with something this small can be tough, which is why you've seen people rig it out or use it on a gimbal, which I've really loved. Anyway, let's unbox the 6K Pro and see what comes inside. One thing is for sure is there's just not many cameras in this price point that offer raw 6K, HDR, you even got dual native ISO on this one. Uh, so you've got some black magic stuff in here, manual, sticker, DaVinci Resolve, license, um, some AC adapters for different plugs in different uh, regions. You have a strap, which I don't know who's using a strap with this camera, but if you use a strap with this camera, please comment down below, because that's crazy. Never heard of that. And you have the beautiful camera itself, um, which has a bit of a better body than the 6K, I think. It, it feels a little bit, a little bit more durable. It feels a little bit more solid. It feels a little bit thicker, um, a little less plasticky, a little less like a bad spill would hurt it. Um, it feels really good in the hand. Uh, this, this grip being a lot bigger, really helps that feel. The whole camera's a little bit taller, as you can see. So from the outside, you have two XLR inputs, which is super convenient because I've done a lot of interviews with the 6K. And you know, a lot of times you're interviewing one person, but a lot of other times you're interviewing two people. And more often than not, you, you find yourself interviewing two people and you need those two inputs. It's so nice to have them both on the same camera because usually I would have one mic go into this camera and then one mic go into the B camera and or a second or third camera. Um, and so it's nice just to have everything in one body. And you still have the HDMI output and all the other regular jacks. Uh, as far as body goes, you have a flip out screen on this one, which is really, really convenient, really convenient. Because one thing about having a camera without image stabilization is you cradle the camera a lot. If I am shooting handheld with this thing, which is rare, I'm usually kind of cradling it and like swaying my body to kind of give it a little bit of motion, kind of capture what's going on, but I don't want to move too much. I don't want to have it out here where it could have a lot of jitters, so I kind of tuck it in close. And one thing with that is I can't see what I'm doing when I have it tucked in too close because the screen is on the back and it's just straight horizontal and pillow, pillow, uh, blah, 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 is, blah, God, malfunction. And parallel with the camera, uh, where this one uh, comes off the camera a bit and tilts up for you. Um, it'll tilt down as well which is really, really nice if you're trying to get over a crowd and see what's going on. And again, if you're cradling, you can flip this up. Classic Ryan Smith move, a videographer I work with every day. Uh, he's a big flip the screen, cradle this bad boy. He gets some nasty shots. Um, but me, personally, I use a gimbal. And one of my favorite things to do with a gimbal is underslung shots from under shooting more up, kind of giving more of a hero angle to whatever subject I'm shooting. And so on, on this thing, when I have my gimbal underslung and I'm trying to see the screen, I'm usually doing like this kind of thing and like almost falling over, I'm breaking my back. It's a nightmare, it's a nightmare. And uh, this will really help my, my spinal column a ton in the future. Just being able to have that there flipped out a little bit on the gimbal to where I can see different angles. Really, really cool. All right, outside of that, another new thing on the body of this one is their new batteries. Now it's using NPF batteries, which is really, really sweet. Uh, the other one used Canon LP batteries, which 
are good, but MPF are way more ubiquitous. I use MPF for lights. I've got a light here that takes MPF, got a light here that takes MPF. And uh, if this will last any longer, you know, that's subjective. They're, they're about the same size battery, but this is much more easy to find. Uh, it's, you probably already have some of these. You're not shuffling a bunch of different types of batteries and a bunch of different types of chargers around, which can get kind of old and it can get a little complicated sometimes. One thing I did on the side is it comes with tabs. I did this to both my, my models, but uh, it comes with tabs. I just take the tabs out. They're really easy to take out and you can put them back in. They're a little more difficult to put back in for sure, but most likely if you're using this thing on a regular basis, you know, you're gonna want these ports exposed, especially depending on how you use it. Now, if you're running gunner and mainly you've got like a stabilized lens and you know, you're around a lot of dust or, or you know, kind of rough conditions, you may want to keep those on. I'm usually indoors, so for me, uh, having them off is just a lot faster and much more convenient. Another feature about these cameras that I love, I really love the resolution. I really like the Black Magic Raw because I'm, I'm big on color grading and I'm big on just having all that extra information. The 13 stops dynamic range is huge, especially with RAW because I feel like a lot of DSLRs that don't have RAW claim 13 stops of dynamic range. The GH5 claims 14 and it's, it's pretty good. But I'll tell you the, the kind of information you can recover from RAW is miraculous and it's way different than what I'm used to being able to recover. With other cameras, it's usually what you capture is what you get. And so if the dynamic range is good in the shot that you got at the time you got it, usually it'll stay that way. Um, but when you need to recover information, that gets pretty hard if you don't have raw footage. Uh, but the raw black magic raw is so freaking good. It's so good at recovering highlights. Um, it's pretty good at recovering shadows, um, but really, really, really impressive at recovering highlights, which is amazing. And that's one of the hardest things to do is recover those blown out highlights. And with that, the EF mount, that's another thing that's just really nice because EF is something that usually your friends have it, the people you work with have it, um, everybody's got it. So it just kind of gets you in a little bit easier of a situation depending on what kind of people you're around, what kind of gear you're around. Um, having that EF can be a lot more convenient than having a proprietary lens mount um, like a Fuji or, or Sony or Panasonic might have. And then there's the screen. The screen on this thing is beautiful. It's big, it's bright, and the touch sensitivity feels like a smartphone. And I know everything should feel like a smartphone. Every touchscreen on the planet should feel like a smartphone. But for some reason, car touchscreens don't. Most camera touchscreens don't. Most refrigerator touchscreens don't. Most other touchscreens that aren't on a cell phone don't feel like a smartphone touchscreen. And it's so frustrating, but this screen feels just like a smartphone touchscreen. It's super responsive. Some people get afraid of the fact that you control so much of the camera from the touchscreen, but when you feel how responsive this is, all of that fear just melts away because it's so good, it's so fast, it's so quick, so intuitive, and so easy to operate and navigate that you never think for a second, oh, I wish that was an actual button instead of a touchscreen button. I've never had that thought with this camera, even though I come, again, from other cameras like the GH5 uh, or the G2s or the 12Ks that have a ton of physical buttons. Um, it, it's still, I, I wouldn't change anything about the way that they have the button and the UI laid out on this camera. It's incredible. Oh, and one thing I didn't touch on is the in-body NDs. This thing has ND filters on the inside in the 6K Pro, which is super convenient. Uh, I believe it'll go up to six stops of ND, which is so, so, so nice. Especially when you're a gimbal guy, because when you're a gimbal guy, you follow people around a lot. Sometimes your shots are really long because you can get a really nice, long, sweeping shot from one room to the other, but the problem is the lighting might change from one room to the other, especially when you're going from inside to outside. And it's really nice just being able to flip uh, those NDs and get down to the stop that I need it to be at, depending on the lighting that I'm walking into. So again, if you're looking for kind of a top of the line, smaller camera, something that can do it all, but may not have those extra bells and whistles like autofocus and stabilization to make it easy, but can do it all in the right configuration. Uh, these cameras are fantastic. I always say, when will they give us everything because either they give us the great autofocus without the image stabilization or they give us the image stabilization without the raw or they give us the raw without autofocus or image stabilization they never just give it all to us maybe one day they will uh, but for now here are my thoughts on the 6k 6k pro 
Leave me comments down below if you want to see how I rig this up to my gimbal. Uh, leave me comments if you have any questions about how I use it, how I grade it. I'm going to be trying to dive deep into the 6K family for you guys here this year. And make sure to give this video a like if you like this video. And if you didn't like the video, maybe give it a like anyway. And of course, make sure to subscribe. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been a Modern Filmmaker. I'll see you all next time. Peace.